Yo, what's going on everybody? This is Rockin' here. Welcome back to a brand new video. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to get that sort of shockwave gunshot effect which you would have seen in my monster montage from one of my edits as well. It's a really cool effect. I haven't really seen many people do it so it's, it's kind of cool when you see it because it's quite rare. And yeah, in this video I'm going to be teaching you how to do it. Just before we get started, I'd like to say I've made several other tutorials on my channel all revolving around editing gaming montages. So I specifically do Valorant but you can use these techniques on CSGO, Fortnite, Rainbow Six, regardless, whatever you want. Uh, it will work with all of them but me specifically i just show you on valorant uh, so make sure you go check some of them out if you want if you want any other tips and tricks when it comes to making your montages and edits so to start off what you're going to want to do is make a brand new after effects composition just like we normally do i've just reopened one of my old edits and created a new comp and dragged in the clip that i want to use as well as the song if you don't know how to do any of this to begin with then make sure you go check out my after effects basics video as well as i covered all of that make sure you go check out my after effects basics video as i covered all of that and then come back to this or any of my other tutorials and you should know what's going on now that my clip imported and I have my song all I've done is just added markers on the song to where the beats are and I've added a marker on the clip to where I actually get the kill and I've just lined them up so that you'll see on this marker is when the you see here on this marker exactly is where I headshot this raise um and that's where I want my shockwave to be I've also slowed down the clip as the shockwave works better when you're standing still and not moving the camera around too much as we're not 3D camera tracking it. We're just placing it and masking the gun in front of it so that it looks like it's coming out of the barrel. So if you're moving or anything like that, you'll have to camera track it. And that's just extra effort to what we're using, to what we're doing. Um, and I also slowed down the clip as well. So, that, so the shockwave has enough to complete its animation uh, before we move anywhere. And also it looks better this way. Otherwise, normally as, as the shot goes off, you're gonna have several other ones coming out whilst the shockwave's still going, which just doesn't look quite as good. So you can see I've already taken time remapped it if i press u you see i've already got these so if i play through it you'll see it will slow down and on the beat it'll be synced to these beats you see it, as soon as it hits it slows and then this is where i want my my shockwave to come during this during this slow part here if you don't know how to time remap i made another tutorial on that uh really in depth so so you can learn how to do that um which again is one of the essentials that you need to know uh for basically doing any sort of valorant editing montage editing in general so make sure you go give that a watch as well the link will be in the top right corner now uh, as well as in the description uh, and in my tutorials playlist which will be the end card on this video and yeah so now that i've slowed the clip down and i've got the point where I get the kill marked and it's on the beat drop all I need to add now is the shockwave so in order to do that I'm just going to drag I'm just going to grab it out of my project bin which I already dragged in here and I'm going to put it on my timeline I'll leave a link to the shockwave in the description if you want to download this exact one and you can see I've got it lined up right at when I get this first kill if we zoom in you can see it's right on this marker so that as soon as I get the kill that the first part of the shockwave appears you can see it's now covering over the clip and in order to fix that all we have to do is come over to the shockwave right click on it and hit blending mode and set it to screen and now you can see it's over the top of the of the clip just like this and it's got rid of that black background now what we want to do is position this in front of the gun barrel i do not recommend grabbing it and just chucking it down there well yes that works for now when we come to masking it out it's going to be a pain to try and move the mask back as well as if we want to try and change the scale of it or anything like that so what i recommend you do is leave it full screen right click on it hit pre-compose call it something like shockwave uh shockwave effect or something like that and make sure you have leave all attributes in tutorial checked otherwise it will remove our blending mode switching it okay and there you go you won't notice any difference it's still the same length it's just changed the color and it's now a pre-comp and that will help us out later on and i'll show you what i mean when we get there now that you've pre-composed it and it's all set to go, we want to go about moving it. Now the reason we pre-composed it is so that we can leave the pre-comp exactly where it is, so we don't want to be moving it and positioning it like this, just like we would have done before. We want to actually go into the composition and move it, and you'll see why later on. It just makes our lives a lot easier. So for this, we've sort of got to use a bit of guesswork, but you know, with enough trial and error, you'll be able to do it. So if we double click on the shockwave effect composition, you can see it here. Now we can grab it, by making sure we have this tool selected and we can move it to roughly where we think it needs to be. Go back, so I know I need to move it left slightly and down a little bit. So I'm gonna do something like, something like that. Is that on the end? Not quite, move it left a little bit more. Not quite, 
left a little bit more and you can see it's pretty much if we go in I want to move it down and left slightly so we'll go something sort of like I think I'm pretty happy with how that looks and see it does look like it's coming out the end of the gun obviously it's in front of it which is not what we want um, and now what we want to do is scale it down because I think that's much too big and when we mask it out it means we're gonna have to mask out a lot more whereas if we make it smaller it makes it easier and more manageable so to scale it go straight back into that composition again zoom out a little bit click on one of the corners like this and then hold shift and you'll be able to drag and scale it in the same point so we don't have to move it again so i think i want to make it something like that and i think that's good i'm going to leave it i'm going to leave it like that now we know what the size of it is we're going to find where the maximum size is which is going to be about there so we know we only have to mask up to this point so this sort of cuff here and I'm going to say roughly around the back of the gun here to make sure we're covering off this part because clearly we don't want that bit showing. So now what we're going to do is get to masking the gun out. So in order to do that, make sure you have the layer with the gun selected, go up to the top, hit the pen tool. And basically what a mask is going to do is it's going to say whereabouts this shockwave can appear and where it can't. So I'm going to start down at this cuff just by clicking and I'm going to select another point and you can see it's now making a line and we're basically going to draw around the outside of where we don't want the shockwave to be. For me that's from here all the way up to about here because obviously it's not going to expand enough to reach the back so we don't have to worry about tracking that. We just need to cover whereabouts it's covering on the gun right now. I'm going to continue down here and go all the way around just using straight lines. You can curve them if you want. In order to curve you just click and drag and it will make it a curved line and then ones off of that you see you can curve like this. I'm just going to make all of mine straight just like this and go around it's really not going to be that noticeable and it's extra effort to try and curve it which i don't really have right now so i'm just going to trace the gun out as well as i can for the time being okay so i've got to the point where i want to be and i just want to make sure that i've masked off this part so in order to close the mask i'm just going to come around something like this just make sure that we get all the back in and do something like that and click to close it now you can see it's hiding the background so basically so where the black is now is where the shockwave is going to be and where it's colored is where it's not going to be and now what we need to do is track the mask to the gun so that it moves over time so in order to do that come down over to the clip with the mask on it go down to masks and where it says add here, you can tick none so that it's not actually going to cover anything, which just makes it easier for us to see. Um, and now if we hide the shockwave effect, that will also make it easier for us. And you'll notice if we go back frame by frame, you see the gun moves slightly and the mask does not track with it. What you can do if you come to the frame that we initially tracked it on and select the mask, go to window tracker, and then you can see the tracker over here. We can go back frame by frame and it should do its best to try and track to the gun like you can see it's moving it see frame by frame we're going back some frames are going to be the same because we've slowed it down and we don't have any frame interpolation on which you don't want when you're tracking masks so just make sure you leave that off we can add that later which will make it smoother i've made a whole other video on that it's part of my time remapping tutorial so if you want to know what that is um you know you can check that out but as you can see it's not really doing a good job so what i would do is i'd undo all of that and i'd come here i'd, I'd drop down mask hit where it says mask path and set a keyframe by clicking the stopwatch now i'm going to go backwards by holding control and the left arrow to a frame where the gun moves as you can see here and then going to select the mask press ctrl t and this is now going to allow me to scale it so you can see it's rotated slightly left so what i'm going to do is move it as close as i can like this and then scale it just like that you see and now it's covering the gun again so that's now updated you can see it's put a keyframe in automatically i'm going to go back to the next frame where it moves which is there you can see that's pretty close so i'm just going to leave that as it is go back to the next frame again that's pretty close there's no need you can see it's pretty much perfect this is slightly off so i might change this a little bit which i can do just by selecting the layer and dragging these points i'm just going to drag them around these iron sights to make it look good no one's really going to notice this if you don't bother personally i you know i wouldn't normally but for the sake of the tutorial just in case it really is noticeable for you and obviously you want to know how to do it and to me that looks close enough everything is pretty much good to go and you can see it's automatically made another keyframe for those adjustments i'm going to keep going back to the next frame where it moves which is here and again you can see it's barely moved so it's pretty much close enough so i'm going to leave it keep going close enough that's slightly above i'm just going to make sure i have the mask selected i'm going to zoom out a little bit actually and press ctrl t to scale and just make sure that it's on there as close as it's going to be something sort of like that 
maybe drag it out a little bit this way. I don't have to worry about this back part at the moment as this is going to be near the beginning of the shockwave so we don't have to worry about that. As you can see this is all good to go and that looks just about close enough to me. I'm going to continue on to the next frame where it moves which is here and you can see that's moved quite a lot so I'm going to make sure I have the mask selected control T and drag it close as I can. I'm just going to adjust some of these again quickly. If the mask is doing this when you're trying to move a specific point you can just make sure you have the actual layer itself selected and not the mask and then you'll be able to drag the individual points. So I'm just going to fix this iron sight again. The hand is maybe slightly off so I might adjust this a little bit. You can always come back and fix the masks later if you need to, if you notice anything wrong. But for me, for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just going to do pretty much the minimum just to make it look good. And I'm going to keep going back to the point where it next moves, which is here. And I'm going to drag it back as close as I can get it. I'm basically using this here as a as a sort of guide, trying to line it up with that. And then hopefully, if I line it up with this, it should line up with everything else. You see, I do need to shrink it slightly and bring it over a little bit more. You can see I've pretty much lined it up with this and the iron sights are back, they're pretty good. This end's not quite perfect, but when the shockwave's going off in amongst this flash, it's not gonna be too noticeable, especially when we're all the way out here. So I'm gonna call that pretty much good enough and we'll keep going back to the next frame where it moves you can see is there and control T and I'm gonna make sure I have the mask selected and control T and move it down slightly that looks good back again to the next frame which is right there and as you can see this is a big movement make sure that I definitely move this by selecting the mask control T and just drag it back onto the gun like that and make some minor adjustments to the iron sights as well and that looks good and i'm just going to keep going back to another frame where it moves which is there and that looks pretty much perfect i'm just going to control t and move it down slightly like that i'm going to move it out slightly as well and that looks good and now we've reached the end so that should if we go through these frames you should see the mask will stay pretty well tracked to the gun You'll notice with a clip like ours, it starts moving over time. So for example, between these two frames, you'll see it's moving up and nothing's actually changing. So in order to fix that, all you have to do is come down to the to where your keyframes are and duplicate. Just find the keyframe where it's on perfectly. So for me, that's this one. Go back one and you can see it moves off and this one's on perfectly. So I'm just gonna copy this keyframe with Control C and paste it onto there. And you can see that's now perfect. This one is now perfect and I'm gonna drag until the frame moves, which is about here, but you see the iron sights moving in between. So I'm just gonna take this keyframe, copy it and paste it just before this one. And you'll see that the mask now stays completely still until it hits one of the other ones. And you're gonna do the exact same over here. Take this keyframe, control C, take it to this one, paste it in front, and you'll see that that now stays completely still. And now for this one where it moves, you can see it pretty much tracks it perfectly. So I'm not gonna to bother touching this one as the natural movement that it makes between this keyframe and this keyframe actually follows the gun pretty well. So I'm just gonna leave that as it is, as you can see. And then between these two frames, you see it comes completely off until it hits here. So I'm just gonna take this last, this keyframe here, control C, I'm gonna paste it just in front here and you'll see it will suddenly snap back on. As you can see, it now stays completely still. And here it does much of the same thing. So I'm gonna take that one, paste it just in front of that one. And you'll see it's now stuck on there as well. This one, the movement's pretty good, although I am just gonna take it as the frame does not actually change throughout all of this. It's just the mask, so I'm gonna paste it on. And you'll see it's now tracking it pretty well. And this final one, you'll see it does a horrific job at, at tracking it. So I'm just gonna grab this one and paste it in there and you'll see now if we scrub through as i drag through you see it's basically holding on to the gun the entire time it comes off a little bit at occasions but like i said we can fix that later if it's a big deal i don't think it's gonna be that much of a problem and you can see here on the last frames you know we didn't bother about any after this point so that's all right we can just leave that as it is we took this at where the shotgun was at its maximum if we turn this on you'll see this is where the shotgun was at its max and it starts to fade out after that so you're not going to notice anything that happens after this point so i'm just going to leave that as it is and now what we want to do is apply this mask that we've made around the gun to the actual shockwave itself so if we turn the shockwave on you can see it's not affected at all if we go to the start point of the shockwave which is here, come down to our clip where the mask is, press Control C on the mask, go up to the shockwave composition and press Control V. That's then gonna paste it onto the 
Hello everyone, this is Rockin' from the future here. I just forgot to mention that when you're dragging or copy and pasting the mask from your clip onto your shockwave, you're going to want to make sure that you line these keyframes up with the ones below. When I pasted them on, mine was sort of like this. So obviously the mask is now going to be moving ahead of the, the gun motion. So what we tracked was literally pointless. So you just want to make sure that you select them all and drag them and make sure that they're and make sure that they're at the same time as the ones on your clip. So then that way they'll actually be tracked properly. And now that you've pasted the mask onto the shockwave composition, you're then going to want to come down here to where it says masks and put this to subtract. And you'll see now the shockwave will only appear behind the gun. So regardless of where we go through it, it appears behind the gun at every point. Now we can delete the mask from down here on the main clip. It's not doing anything, you know, we have it hidden, but you know, we may as well delete it. There's no need to have it on there. As you can see, it's almost done. If we play this out, You can see it's, the effect is pretty much complete as it does go behind it. The only things we can do now is change the speed that it comes out and as well as the color of it. So if the speed is messed up, like you know it's coming out too quickly or too slowly, don't change it on the composition itself. Come into the composition, find your shockwave, right click on it, go to time and then time stretch. So you can see it says 100, which is normal speed. 200 would be half the speed, 50 would be two times the speed. So if I put it to 50, the shockwave's gonna last 50% of the time that it did before. I know it seems a bit strange the way it's done, but if you put 200, it means it's basically gonna double how long it takes. You put it at 50, it's gonna half how long it takes. For me, mine is pretty much set to go already. I've already remapped it, so mine comes out and disappears just as I want it to. But just, you know, go, go in there, right click, time, time stretch and adjust it and play with it to the point where you get it to where you're happy where it comes out at the right speed and you know it disappears before you know you do any mad camera movements or anything like that. In order to change the color of it what you can do it doesn't matter whether you do it on the composition or on the actual clip inside the composition I'm just going to do it on the composition but if you come over to where it says effects and presets type in hue and you'll see down here hue and saturation drop that on and then if you come up here you can tick colorize drag the saturation up to like you know, roughly 60, 70%, something like that. And you'll see it's the color starting to change. And now if we cycle through, you'll see color hue or colorize hue zero. And then on these next double zeros, if you click and drag, you'll be able to cycle through all of the colors until you get to a color that you like. So if I wanted, I don't know, pink, for example, and I wanted it to be really saturated or not so saturated, you know, I wanted it to be somewhere around here. I can do that. And now the color, if I play, play it through, you can see the color is now pink. So that pretty much does it for the tutorial. You can see the shockwave appears behind the gun. So it looks like it's coming out of the barrel. Uh, you can change the color of it, the speed of it, all things like that. You don't have to put a shockwave there. You could put an explosion there. You could put literally anything so long as it has a black background so you can apply the screen blending mode and get rid of it. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Let me know if you use this in the comment section. Leave a like on the video if you found it helpful and subscribe for future tutorials as well as make sure you check out all my other ones for more cool effects like this one as well as my edits and montages for inspiration on what to do with these effects. And other than that, I'll, uh, I'll catch you in the next video.